are energy channels and transmitters. This is a Sanskrit word that refers to all the places in which our awareness can flow in the body and around it too. I believe that um, as this word has come from Sanskrit, it still exists in many Indian languages for a river. In Hindi, the word for river is Nadi. So you could say that these are the rivers of, of current throughout our, our body, in our subtle body specifically, our sukshuma body, which extends past our, our physical body, our sthula body. Anyway, nadis are energy channels through which prana, divine energy, life, and consciousness itself streams. Within the human body, there is a subtle and perfect network of 72,000 nadis that distribute this life force throughout the whole body. On the physical level, the nadis correspond to the nervous system, but their influence extends beyond this to the astral and spiritual planes of our existence. If all the nadis are functioning correctly, then we are healthy and generally feel happy, but nearly every one of us has some physical or mental problem, which means that some of the nadis are not working properly and needs to be balanced. Prana is conscious energy, which means that the nadis also transmit consciousness. By means of the nadis one can see and hear things at a great distance and move in other levels of consciousness. There are numerous reports of people who were clinically dead and then came back to life again. Maybe some of you have experienced such near-death experiences. They nearly all described how they traveled along a tunnel with light radiating at the end. This tunnel is the nadi through which life escapes from the body. We can also have such quote-unquote tunnel experiences in dreams and on astral journeys. With these, we are not really outside the body, but in an altered state of consciousness. The nadis make it possible for us to take mental journeys of discovery throughout the entire universe. With their help, our consciousness is able to go to any place we would like to, we would like, without the body having to move at all. The nadis, or three nadis, are of special importance. The Ida, Bhingala, and Sushumna nadi. The Ida arises in the left side of the body and represents the moon principle, Chandra. Bhingala begins on the right side of the body and symbolizes the sun principle, Surya and Sushumna runs through the central channel of the spinal cord and represents the consciousness. On the physical level, Pingala has its counterpart in the sympathetic nervous system, Ida in the parasympathetic nervous system, and Sushumna in the central nervous system. The moon symbolizes the mind with its changeable feelings, whereas the sun represents the intellect just as our emotions and thoughts change constantly, the moon is also constantly changing its form. The intellect, however, is a stable and constant principle, like the sun. Only when harmony and balance prevail between the moon system and the sun system are we healthy and capable of developing further, mentally and spiritually. There are special yoga techniques for harmonizing both principles, such as the Chandra Bhedi Pranayama and the Surya Bhedi Pranayama. Chandra means the moon, referring to the Ida Nadi, Surya means the sun, referring to the Pingala, and Bhedi means the pervading or purifying aspect. The left side of the brain enables rational, abstract, and logical thinking and the right side relates to the emotions and feelings as well as intuition and creativity. Therefore, one of the reasons for the expression Kundalini 
meaning serpent power, originated because of the way in which the Nadis proceeded in a serpentine, and with this resemble the movement of a snake. We are able to activate and harmonize the nadis through the breath. When we breathe through the left nostril in pranayama, we activate the ida nadi. The ida nadi cools, quietens, and refreshes the body and mind like the silvery light of the moon. However, the pingala nadi, which is influenced by breathing through the right nostril, has a warming and activating influence in the same way as sunshine warms the earth and stimulates the growth of vegetation. Ida and Pingala begin in the brain at approximately the level of the pituitary gland. Ida has an effect on the right side of the brain, whilst Pingala influences the left hemisphere. To maintain balance, both nadis run in a snake-like course from one side of the body to the other. At the points where they cross, they also meet with a central nadi, Sushumna. At those places where the power and radiance of the sun and moon meet, together with the strengthening effect of the Sushumna, there are very powerful energy centers called chakras. The first crossing of the nadis is at the top of the spinal column, and it forms the Vishuddhi chakra, the throat chakra. And the last crossing at the base of the spine forms the Muladhara Chakra, which is the root center. Here the Ida Nadi flows on the left side of the body and the Pingala Nadi on the right. And it is precisely here that our dominant consciousness lies hidden. At several places along the spinal column, the Nadis form a type of knot called a Granthi each of which constitutes a key point in our spiritual development. When these knots are quote-unquote united, the energy located within them is activated and the hidden powers known as Siddhis are given to us as healing powers, the seeing of past and future, the seeing of auras and other supernatural abilities. Other terms for Ida, Pingala and Sushumna are Ganga, Yamuna, and Sarasvati, which, as many of you might know, are referred to as real rivers in India today, with the exception of Sarasvati, which is more mythical. It is said that Sarasvati once was in between the Ganga and Yamuna, but today there is no such trace of a river. Anyway, these are the names of the three holiest rivers in India. Ganga and Yamuna flow on the surface, but Sarasvati flows underground. It rises to the surface only once every 12 years. This event happens in conjunction with a particular planetary constellation and is known as the Kumbha Mela. This great spiritual festival of India held at the confluence of these three rivers, known as the Sangam, is attended by millions of people who come to attain liberation from their karmas and the cycle of rebirth by bathing in the sacred waters. But for the yogi, the three main nadis are the divine rivers, and the agya chakra, the eyebrow center, also known as the third eye, where these nadis meet is the holy place of pilgrimage where the yogi attains liberation. Just as the mysterious river, Sarasvati, only rarely appears, the Sushumna Nadi is only active for certain short periods of time, for example, at dawn or at dusk. When the three main Nadis unite, only one stream of consciousness flows, the spiritual energy of the Sushumna Nadi. The energy also flows through this Nadi in deep meditation, and in Samadhi. For as long as the Sushumna is inactive, we are plagued by constantly changing, changing citta vrittis, citta meaning consciousness and vritti meaning a state or activity or preoccupation, thought forms basically. 
thoughts, emotions, worries, etc. But once the sushumna begins to flow, the waves of the mind come to rest, and we, quote unquote, bathe in the bliss of divine consciousness. There we are. Let's pause our reading of the hidden power in humans there for now. Such a wonderful description of the Nadis. I hope you enjoyed that much as I did. Namaste.